uh, I'd like to start today by talking about two days ago, May the 26th. I bet you I have gotten very close to 1,000. It's almost that close. There probably is by the time I get through all of my emails. But people sending me emails asking me questions about the 26th of May. If something was going to happen on the 26th, I would have told you. Uh, nothing did happen. Nothing was going to happen. I don't know where people come up with these dates. Um, if you're trying to set a date using especially solar astrology, uh, wow, I don't even know what to say. There have been hundreds of thousands of dates set just in my lifetime alone. And none of them, not one single one of them have ever happened. Not one. Uh, and as far as lunar astrology is concerned, most of them since 2012 have decided to completely rearrange the zodiac. And now they have a 13th sign. I don't know what they consider Earth and our sun if we're not the 13th sign. Are we 14? Are we zero? What are we? How do we play into that? Into that? So it's all really ridiculous to even attempt to set dates. Uh, the only thing I look at to set dates are what the planets are saying. Uh, where, where they're at, what the sun is saying, when, like the two eclipses with a Saturn Jupiter conjunction right in the middle of them on a solstice. Now that says something. That says something astronomical, not just for Earth, but for the whole system. To change from one sign to another says something for our whole solar system, not just Earth. It's for everything. But what's the, the date setting, the hype, the fear porn that they induce people with. Um, some of them, it's a, it's a great day. It's supposed to be a great day and, and great shifts and were going to happen. And in other videos, they were, uh, it's gloom and doom and horror. I, I still, I still don't know how they come up with these dates. Nobody in any, Nothing anybody sent me showed me why I could look at the stars and come up with that date. Let's go to that date, actually. Let's back it up two days. Let's put it at 12 o'clock that day. It's straight up noon. And I don't see anything special. Nothing. Today's more special than the 26th was. Today, kind of a little special day we don't get very often. Let's go back to now. Because it's a good one. We have a Mercury-Venus conjunction in Taurus. Over the what you call the lunar pillar in Freemasonry. Out of Orion. It's really beautiful. Uh, especially in Venus's house, and neither one of them are combust of the sun. So you have Venus, Mercury, and the sun all in Taurus. I'd like to look at this in the Arabic in a minute. <clears throat> Mars, soon to be headed into Cancer. Uh, I really thought the elite would pull the trigger by now. I don't know why they're dragging their feet unless they're doing it intentionally. Um, but we could very well be uh, are, are being set up. Uh, they should have done played a couple of the Illuminati cards by now that they have not played yet. Uh, three of them in particular. Uh, they have to play the mask comes off card. And it's not really been done. Half of some states are no mask and some states are trying to instruct uh, stricter mask protocol. Some countries are backing off. Some countries are uh, implementing stricter uh, re uh, recommend uh, laws and recommendations. Um, so that card should have done been played. Don't know why they haven't played it. I'm not really seeing what the stall is. Uh, they also have the 
alien card, they're ramping up to get to play that. And then they're going to play the film runs out card. The show is over. And that's when things are going to get really serious. Now, they should have pulled their trigger before Mars comes into Cancer. When Mar If they do it while Mars is in Cancer, then we've been set up to lose a battle. But they're trying to make all hell break loose in the Middle East. And which is not a good time with Mars where it is. And it's getting even worse. Uh, Mars in Cancer is what I call peace on Earth. It, Mars is debilitated. The god of war is debilitated in Cancer. And no country who has any decent astrologer at the helm would ever start a war with Mars in Cancer. Uh, whoever throws the first stone, they're done. It's over. You've lost before you even got started. So nobody would do this. The god of war will have that ass. So, but when Mars comes out of cancer, he goes right into um, Leo, which is fixed fire, and he will ramp up. Now, Mars played a part and the first eclipse that happened here in the United States. Uh, with the Sun, Mars, Regulus, uh, Mercury, Venus, they were all loaded up in fire. They were all loaded up on the fixed cross right here. That's been several years ago. We're, we're beyond the halfway point now. Uh, and surely I thought they would have, have played a few more cards than they have played. But it's their game. It's their deck. I really love the moon right now. It's fantabulous. Uh, I want to look at all of this in the Arabic. Because their star lore, their images, it's not really Arabic. It's Oriental. We, I don't know why they call it Arabic. It's Oriental. It's very obvious this is not uh, what we've been told it is. So let's take a look at what we've got in this one. Really pretty Venus-Mercury conjunction there in the horns of the bull, <clears throat> which actually it's a cow. It's feminine. I don't know why we call it a bull, but we do. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> but I don't, I don't see where they came up with this date. I know... Um, I saw a couple of videos somebody sent me to check out that were about um, the Mayan or Aztec calendar, and that's where they're getting these dates. It's from these Mayan and Aztec calendars. They don't even know how to read them. Boy, 2012 was a, a really shift changer, wasn't it? Absolutely nothing happened. No shift change. Matter of fact... Bef even before 2012 hit, I was telling you that 2012 was nothing. It's not there in the stars. Don't know what they're reading. And I didn't know a fraction of what I know right now. Um, but that even before 2012, I was telling you 2020 was the crazy day. And 20, this, this year is going to be crazier than last year. You just, I haven't seen it yet. They have not pulled the trigger. And I, I, for the life of me, I don't know why. I, I can't figure out what has occurred that would stop them from going through with this. And then it occurred to me that I think Elon Musk was right. Uh, this year is a simulation. It's a trial run. It's not the real deal. They have no intention of pulling the trigger this year. This was a, a dress rehearsal to see what they needed to fix. Last year and this year, that's what this has been. It's a dress rehearsal. They're ramping up. They're practicing. They're finding where the holes are. They're finding, uh, they're even finding people that can see through this, and then those that can't see it at all. They want some of both. 
they'll use us all if they they'll use everything in their arsenal and everything that of ours that will allow them to they have whole generations up doing their battle for them doing their speaking for them doing their rituals for them it's really crazy and it's all done through the tv and the radio and things like twitter and people have no idea they just get in line this is the age of pisces it's about groupthink everybody wants to fit in it's it's like the whole world is turned into a bunch of seventh graders and they're all vying for um who's the most popular in the class and who's the class clown and and who's the dweeb it's really ridiculous everybody trying to fit in and find their slot within the group in within the hive mind a hive mind is made up of many 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 very weak 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 minds to be a part of a hive mind you have to be a yes man you can't have any original thoughts you can't you're not allowed to think for yourself or speak for yourself you're just a sock puppet that's all you are that's all you can be if you try to be more than that sock puppet then you're going to be ostracized, humiliated, even killed. They will eliminate you from the hive mind at all costs. It's like the Borg. It's like the Matrix. Uh, and Agent Smith, right? Agent Smith, is, he's decided he's going to take over. That he's the real one, not Neo. It's Agent Smith. He's the one that's going to change the Matrix uh, it's just freaking crazy. But today's a pretty day for me. It's not uh, an auspicious day at all. This is very good mojo, very good juju, whatever you want to call it. Now, and I'm happy about that. I'm happy about today because I've had a really hard, about the last 10 days, it's been really difficult. Um, we've had a lot of storms rolling through here. And it upsets Kelly really bad. I don't know why. She grew up in Alabama around a lot worse thunderstorms than here. And she was around guns all the time. Every weekend we would go out target practicing. And she would never flinch. She didn't even blink an eye. Just, we're just dropping off rounds left and right. And she's just part of it. She grew up around it. But now, I don't know, after living in the desert for three years with no rain and no storms whatsoever uh, I don't know but now she just goes into complete breakdown it's just beside herself uh, pacing the floors having panic attack after panic attack it's really insane I don't I don't even know how to explain it but uh, this went on for days and it was just one would roll through about the time it would clear out and she'd put herself together another one would come through and it was really stressful on all of us. She wasn't sleeping, not eating. And uh, then the seizures right mixed in with it. It was a pretty difficult week. And at the same time, we were trying to prepare. Uh, I, I left two days ago, Wednesday, Wednesday. I had to go to Texas and take my brother to the airport. Thank goodness it was a lull day. That was the one day that there were no thunderstorms that whole day so great that went off really well i got him there got back and no sooner than i get back and the thunderstorms start rolling through again and we had another one last night finally it's cleared off and she's finally laying down and has pulled herself together she's upset about my brother being gone. She's paced the floor, waited on him at the door. He's not coming back. She's made me let her in that room 10 times just to check and see. And she just wants to be in there. She loves him. She loves that male energy that I'm just not able to give her. Uh, any male that comes in this house, she just clings to them, especially my brother. She remembers him from when he she was a puppy. And um, he visited us in California a few years ago when we lived there. She remembered him then. So she's always loved him. He's always give her that aggressive male attention that she just craves. So 
but she's snapping out of it a little bit today, and he'll be back in a couple of months. Um, I reckon if I was in his shoes, uh, I would do exactly what he's doing. I wouldn't waste a minute. Uh, if I had things left in my bucket list I wanted to do, I would do what he's doing. And I want to be able to help him do that. Um, thankfully, he got where he's going, and things are better than he expected. So that's really good news. Just a lot of good news today. Um, I'm really happy about it. But um, the 26th for me, I guess Wednesday, that was when I left really early that morning. I guess we left about 3 o'clock, 3.30 that morning to go to uh, Dallas and we actually got to see the moon. It was in the windshield pretty much the entire trip of uh, watching that blood moon everybody was talking about. But I just didn't see it in the stars. I didn't understand. I mean, it's not like we don't have these moons all the time. This is not something even when they say it's rare, uh, you're going to see that uh, several times in your lifetime. Uh, the moon eclipses twice a year. Uh, we have these same blood moons and uh, full moons and blue moons every year. Uh, I didn't. I just didn't see it in the stars. I wasn't able to answer all of you, but I wonder why you keep falling for this. Why you keep falling for this hype? Somebody tells you something. Didn't you even bother to look and do the research yourself? Uh, which I get it. Most of you just want to ask me and let me do it for you. Uh, we need You need to be learning to do this for yourself. You should have been able to look inside yourself and knew that was hype. You should have known. <sighs> Things just don't happen Things don't happen like that unless they are engineered. And when, I've already showed you, when the Vatican or its other hand, remember there are two popes, a white pope and a black pope, they're going to play, um, the white pope is Pisces and the black pope is Virgo. Um, that's what Freemasonry really is. Freemasonry in this age is Pisces and Virgo, black and white. But they're still trying to play like they're Taurus. They're trying to play like they're Taurus and Scorpio. And that's where the rituals occur. That's where they do them. Um, what we call Freemasonry, or the Black Pope, he does his rituals in Taurus. What we call the Vatican, or the White Pope, he does his rituals when the moon is in the upper house of Scorpio that we call a fucus, that they've tried to make a 13th sign. Just ridiculous. Um, if you'll keep your eye on what they're doing, you're going to learn more from the actions of what the two sides of the Vatican does than you can anything. Now there's their counterpart. You still have, being in this mutable age of the mutable cross, we still have to deal with uh, Jupiter in Sagittarius and Mercury in Gemini. Uh, in the masculine aspect, in the Western tradition, we have uh, Jupiter in Pisces and Mercury in Virgo on the feminine axis. But there's still the, that's the black and white. We, in the Western tradition, we deal with the black and white. But in the Eastern tradition, they have the yellow and the red. They have Sagittarius and Gemini. Sagittarius, yellow, fire, Jupiter. And Gemini, red, uh, Mercury. For air sign. And that is, um, you'll find those colors in Tibet. That's where you'll find they'll have the red over the yellow. Um, for our, our, and then the other group is the yellow over the red. They don't, the Vatican splits them, one's black, one's white. 
uh, but theirs are intermingled. You don't know which one you're going to get. Uh, one group is Jupiter over Mercury, and the other one is Mercury over Jupiter, depending on where the colors lay. And, and it, everything's done by signs and symbols. Now, back in the after 9-11, when I moved back to Oklahoma, oh, the second or third time in my life, I brought my son back. I wanted him to go to school here. I wanted him to experience, um, have a different experience than growing up in a chaotic city in public schools. I'd had him in private schools, and that really wasn't working out. So I decided to bring him back here and put him into a Native American school. And... <clears throat> Hold on, I need to pause real quick. Sorry about that. I don't mean to cough into the microphone. Um, anyway, I brought my son back here to Oklahoma for school, and we actually sat down and tried to learn uh, Chinese. At least speak it. Uh, it was obvious we weren't going to get the writing. But I was fascinated uh, with it. But we did. We spent quite a long time... Uh, we had satellite TV back then, so we got world TV and a lot of that. And they had a channel where they speak, where they teach you conversational Chinese or Mandarin. And we just couldn't get it. We tried really hard. And I'm really good at picking up languages. And we would just sit and die for hours laughing at ourselves at trying to learn this stuff. And finally, we just gave up. Uh, and I just, I, I moved from that. I had, this is when I found that trunk load full of um, Masonic books. Uh, and there were older ones too from the turn of the last century, 1800s into the 1900s. They were that old. And a trunk full of them. I mean, uh, well over several hundred books. And I just delved into those. Now, most of them were what I call Mormon-based Freemasonry is what it was. Uh, there were Mormon Bibles in there and uh, Mormon Lodge stuff. So when I first got into learning all of this, that's what I learned was the Mormon thing because those were the books I had. But then I had been on the Internet and I was on this site called Conspiracy Central. And I forget what I even posted there one day, but I posted something and someone hopped on and asked me if I would like an invite to occult.biz. And I jumped on it. Now, I didn't use my name back then. I had an avatar and they had no idea I was even a female. But I, whatever I had said back on Conspiracy Central, they done taken that site down. It was wiped as well. So, uh, but it was about Freemasonry. It was a, I was asking questions about what I was finding in these books and making comments about it. So I got, I guess they assumed I was a Freemason. So I got invited over there and I probably, I ate that place up. I probably, um, done more research and read more of that material than anybody on that site. I moved from what you would consider a novice or an apprentice way up the ladder very, very fast, especially because I had read all these Freemasonry books. And I, I, I now ha had terminology and I understood what a lot of this meant. And the symbology was starting to click for me. I still really didn't understand the connections for it all. But I seen what they were doing and what they were attempting to do. But no matter what I did, whether I was looking at the language side of it or the symbology side of it or uh, the esoteric side of it, it, it regardless, it did not matter Everything, and I mean everything, when you traced it back to its root, where is this stuff coming from? Uh, it always led me to the stars. Always back to the stars. Okay, back to astrology we go. So I would look at solar astrology and lunar astrology. Nope, this ain't it. It just, it don't make sense. What the hell are they talking about? Because I'm not seeing what you're saying. Just like 
the hype on the 26th. I'm not seeing what you're saying. And I didn't. I didn't see any of it. Uh, and so I decided uh, when I was in Yuba City with Vicky and her family, I decided it was time to do a test. So to to find out which is true, solar astrology or lunar astrology. Well, Stellarium uses lunar astrology. It's or it was based on the old lunar calendar before they changed it to the 13th sign. Now it's been scrubbed and changed, but then it was clear that solar astrology was bogus completely, that we had been double crossed because Stellarium following lunar astrology are, are where the planets actually are. And when I would do the charts based on lunar astrology, and they were just 15 minutes, uh, just give me your birthday. Let me tell you what I'm seeing in the stars, and you tell me if it's right. Little 15-minute charts. And one after the other, bam, 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 bam. Uh, most of the people had been double-crossed, and they were really amazed, one, to find out that they were a different sign, and then to find out that the new sign actually fit them a lot better than what they were told in uh, solar astrology. So I just kind of went with it. I still wasn't sure about it. It took me another maybe a year and a half before I really, it really clicked for me that um, what was going on was not solar or lunar, but there was another way. And it was alchemical astrology. And once I picked up on the symbology and realized that, hey, um, they're both wrong. We have to take, the, they're both the broad way. We need the straight and narrow path. And when I found that, then everything fell into place. There, there is no more guesswork. It's clear just watching the those the mystery schools that follow the solar pillar and then you have mystery schools that follow the lunar pillar and they war with each other for thousands of years and then all of a sudden at 9 11 there this there's only one there's no more solar and lunar astrology they have combined them uh, they took down the two pillars and made them one and Anybody that does astrology knows that's not going to work. Uh, that only works during an eclipse. That's the only time that works. Well, the only thing that was unique about the 26th is it's the opposite of a solar eclipse. It's a lunar eclipse. Uh, and the solar eclipse, the sun, uh, is overshadowed by the moon and in a lunar eclipse uh, the sun denies any light to the moon just no light so it's um it's the pendulum swinging the other way and if you if they were going to do a ritual that's when they should have done it but these groups that we're dealing with, the black and the white, because I, I can't comment on the yellow and the red, because I don't understand the language, I don't understand their astrology, and any information coming out of China is off limits to us. So, but I know what the Vatican does, what both hands of the Vatican does. The, the black pope does his rituals when the moon is in Taurus. And the white pope does his rituals when the moon is over here in Ophiuchus. Now, it was close. You, we had right there. You would have had, but that's the end of the day. This is, the, the eclipse is over here. It was at a rising, not a setting. This is where they would have done the ritual. After on the 27th. They would have never done it uh, over here. It, it, they don't care about the time of day. They don't care about any of it. This moon must be on what they call um, the feminine axis 
of the fixed cross. That's what they're trying to do. And when they do the rituals on the feminine axis, it is to manipulate the masculine axis. The 9-11 ritual was done by the Freemasons with the moon in Taurus. The black pope done the ritual with the moon in Taurus. But the ritual was done on a day when it was uh, 9-11 is the exact day that it's the last day of Leo, the first day of Virgo. 3-11, Fukushima is the last day of Pisces, the first day of Aquarius. It's, it's the crossing over. Uh, they're manipulating the fixed cross, the masculine axis, but they're using the feminine axis to do it. And they have all this regalia and all this stuff that they wear that tells you, oh, we're Taurus and we're Egyptian Freemasonry Taurus. No, you're not. You're Virgo. You're Virgo. That's all you ever were. That's all you can ever be. You can masquerade around in the regalia of Egypt, but this is the age of Pisces, and the black pope is Virgo, and the white pope is Pisces. And there's no way around that. They can play whatever they want, but it's just pretend. The only way that they remain in power is it is a hive mind, especially the water side of, um, of this thing because of the moon. The moon rules water on the lunar pillar and it is a hive mind. And it's made up of many, 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 many weak minds. All those weak minds used to be sitting in the church. Uh, now, they used to be over here in the church. That's what Pisces is all about. It's about religion, group think, illusion, delusion, all of that. But Mercury over here is not a hive mind. It's not even group think. It's, it's real individual. Uh, Cinderella is alone. Rapunzel is in the castle alone. I don't care if you're in a group full of people. That damsel in distress has nobody to help her. She's waiting on Prince Charming to come save her. Olive oil is constantly bombarded with Papa and Brutus. Which one to choose? Olive oil is Mercury in Virgo. Uh, baby Mercury. You can even look at Sweet Pea as Baby Mercury. Uh, uh, that's the virgin and the child. But that's not Mother Mary. No, 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 no. That's the other Mary with the alabaster box. Mother Mary is the divine feminine cancer, cardinal water, mama's house. This is what's lacking in the whole thing of what they're doing. I want to take you, I want to take you to the book of Daniel. Hold on. Okay, we are in the book of Daniel, chapter 2. And Nebuchadnezzar has had his dream. Nobody can tell him the dream. They're all fixing to get killed. And Daniel steps up and says, Wait a minute. Uh, here it goes. And Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changeth the times and the seasons. This is speaking of Daniel's God. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealeth deep secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness and the light that dwelleth within him. I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who hath given me wisdom and might and hath made known unto me now what we desired of thee, for thou hast made known unto us the king's matter. Therefore Daniel went into Arioch, uh, whom the king had ordained to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He went and said unto him thus, Destroy not the wise men of ba Babylon. Bring me in before the king, and I will show unto the king the interpretation. Then Arioch brought in Daniel before the king in haste, and said, unto, said thus unto him, 
I have found a man of the captives of Judah that will make known unto the king the interpretation. The king answered and said unto Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, Art thou able to make known unto me the dream from which I have seen and the interpretation thereof? And Daniel answered in the presence of the king, and said, The secret which the king hath demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers show the king? But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets, a God in heaven, not fire, heaven, that revealeth secrets and made known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Thy dream and the visions upon thy head, upon thy bed, are these. As for thee, O king, thy thoughts came into thy mind upon thy bed. What should come to pass hereafter? And he that revealeth secret maketh known to thee what shall come to pass. But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living, but for the sakes, but for their sakes, that shall make known the interpretation to the king, that thou mightest knowest the thoughts of thy heart. Thou, O king, sawest, and behold, a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This word terrible should be awesome, not terrible as in afraid. The image's head was of fine gold, his breast and arms were of silver, his belly and thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet partly iron and part of clay. This is what we're going to talk about, these feet. Thou sawest till that a stone cut without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were iron and of clay, and they break them into pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces and became like chaff of the summer threshing floors, and the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This is the dream. Now, I want to show you. We're in the age of miry clay. Virgo is miry clay. It's mutable earth, miry clay. And this is the iron that goes down the middle of it. So <clears throat> this iron of fire and air is overruling the, here we have Virgo and Pisces. That makes this um, Sagittarius and Gemini. But this thing right here overrides the Sagittarius Gemini. It's only mutable. This is cardinal. So it won't stand. And let me let me explain it to you in religion. This is a Chris mark. We've already done the Chris T and a T. Christianity. Christianity. We've done this. This is a Chris mark. And um, it represents the church. It represents her. It's feminine sign. It represents the woman, the church. Now, this guy comes in. This is the God of the Old Testament, the God of fire, right there. That's Molech, top and center. This Down here, is what you would call Lucifer, right? So this whole thing flips upside down. When Peter goes to die, this cross that this thing is on is flipped. So Molech goes down and Lucifer rises. So, but this thing can't stand. You can't, and let me show you why it can't stand. Because this is Mercury and Jupiter, and they rule money. They rule money. Mercury rules money. Mercury it, commerce. Mercury rules um, the pharmaceutical in industry. He rules all advertisement, all media, all television, all radio. Everything in the air waves is ruled by Mercury. And they want to mix 
war. They're making money off of war. That is iron mixed with clay. Is trying to make damn money off of war, which is what they're doing right now. Pitting one side against the other. You always got to have the adversary. And the bankers, the bankers are part of this. They play both sides. The bankers are actually holding up Molech so that they can profit off both sides. Doesn't matter who wins or loses the war. The bankers rolling in the dough. And it's fiat currency. Gemini, fiat currency. It's out of thin air. Fiat. There's nothing to back it. Th this On the mutable cross, there's no gold in this age. There's no sun in this age. There's no pure gold anywhere. That's coming. And I know you all hate it. But in just as in this age of Pisces, we look up to Virgo, the Virgin, the Church, Catholicism. That was supposed to be the true religion. But it's and as long as it remained the X, it was. But when they brought in this guy. Uh, let me show you what else. This is Christianity. This is Judaism. So this Judeo-Christian shit that so many Christians have bought into and they're upholding this little horn that they don't have a clue about. Well, this is when it all comes down. Let's hear what Daniel has to say about it. Because this stone that's cut without hands, don't you know what that is? A stone is a star. What star in your head's cut without hands? It's your third eye. And it broke them into pieces. And the age of Aquarius comes. Fomahal, that star, Thalem, cuts all this into pieces. <clears throat> then was the iron, Mars, and the clay, Virgo, and the brass, Taurus, fake Freemasons, and the silver, Cancer, water, the moon, Pisces, and the gold. The age of uh, uh, Leo. This goes all the way back. All of this, all the way back to Leo. Nebuchadnezzar is that gold. And it's broke to pieces together and became like chaff of the summer and the threshing floors. All of these ages are fixing to be wiped out. We're told we will not even remember them. And the wind carried them away. Wind, air carried them away, and no place was found for them. And the stone, the star that smote the great image, became a great mountain. Great mountain is the same thing as saying Capricorn, Cardinal Earth. That became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. And this is the dream uh, and the interpretation thereof before the king. And it's all astrology, every bit of it. It's not a who done it. it's a when it was done. It's not a who, it's a, a when. Most of the time we're asking where, uh, where, and it's a when. This time it's a who, and it's a when. <clears throat> but this is what's going on. Let me see if I can pull this same thing out of Revelation. This was supposed to be another 15-minute video. This keeps happening to me. The Spirit jumps on me and tells me, well, say this, well, say this. Okay, Revelation chapter 12. Let's look at it this way. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. Now this word heaven right here, normally, nine times out of ten, heaven is going to translate from a word that we associate in alchemy with air. But not this heaven here. This heaven here would translate to what I would call vault or ceiling. And uh, it means the zodiac. And there appeared a great wonder in the zodiac. A woman clothed with the sun. Now, the to be clothed with the sun means that you're rising in the spring equinox. Not the there are no women in heaven. We're told this in uh, the Quran. There are no women in heaven. That's because air signs are masculine, right? That's why this heaven is vault. It's not air. It's vault. Uh, so this we're, the woman in the zodiac because there are no women in heaven. So we know we're not talking about an air sign. 
we're talking about the vault. And to be clothed with the sun means you're rising in the spring equinox. So when Virgo, the woman in the vault, is in the spring equinox, clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, Pisces, water, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars, she wears the zodiac now because Virgo is in the spring equinox. And she being with child cried and travailed, right? The little Virgin Mary's got a baby. Back then you would have called her Semiramis. You wouldn't have Semiramis or Semiramis. You wouldn't have called her Virgo or Mother Mary. It's And actually it's the other Mary. It's not even Mother Mary. Mother Mary is Cancer, the Divine Feminine. Mary time water. Mary time law. So, but this is the other Mary, uh, the harlot that done washed his feet with her tears and dried it with her hair. Uh, so she's ready to give birth to a child, right? And there appeared another woman, have, uh, wonder, in the vault. And behold, a great red dragon, red as air, air, and having uh, seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. Um, now, a third part of heaven here is air. It's not vault. Because the air signs are broken into three. So when you have uh, this woman that's having a child, Mercury in Virgo, is she's having a child that's supposed to rule the earth. And that ha she has twins. Mercury goes from Virgo, Earth, is caught up, her child is caught up into heaven, Gemini. All right? In, in four ages Vance, it'll be Gemini. And he's supposed to rule the Earth with a rod of iron. Y'all think that's the Messiah. Y'all think that. And his hell, uh, this dragon here anyway is religion. All of them. All of them. And he's drawn a third part of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man child, Gemini, who was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. there and her child was caught up to God to his throne air the throne is the zodiac he's now in the spring equinox this is Gemini so we just jumped several ages from the age of Virgo in the spring equinox to now Gemini in the spring equinox and the woman fled into the wilderness the woman's fleeing into the wilderness right now because we are experiencing the last days of Virgo in the fall equinox. Uh, now we're going to move into Leo in the fall equinox. The lion there, the sun itself. And we just go into the war. But this, I wanted these verses to show you they're talking about the same thing. They're talking about the iron mixed with the clay right here. The man-child to rule the nations with a rod of iron. Well, now, now we're in the fish in the spring equinox. We have the two fishes are in the spring equinox. And uh, it's being ruled by, you look up again, that virgin is back in the, in the vault. She's not in the vault. She's in the wilderness. And it's time for him to rule. And he's ruling with this rod of iron. Which is war. Uh, and he feeds her this 2,300 score days for three and a half zodiac signs. Three and a half zodiac signs. The woman's in the wilderness. She she doesn't come back into power or into the face of the beast until she hits the uh, the winter solstice. And there's a war in heaven. Blah blah. We'll we'll go through all of this later in a different presentation because I don't want to get away from what we're talking about. Is this symbol? 
and how it won't stand and what takes it down. It's the, it's the star Fomahawk. It's the age of Aquarius rising in the spring equinox. It's the son of man. It's the man in the sign of sun in the spring equinox. It's Aquarius stops this and breaks it into pieces. And that's what's going to happen. That's the shift that's coming is we're, and what happens? What's Aquarius about? Aquarius is about remembering. Aquarius is about knowing. Remember, knowing by remembering. And when we all remember, we're, those of you who've reincarnated, you're going to remember all your past lives. And we're going to remember who this rod of iron is. We're going to remember, you're going to remember you. Not just everything else and everybody else. You're going to remember you. And that's why we get the statement that some will awaken to everlasting life and some to self-shame and self-condemnation. Nobody judges you but you. Your higher self is recording everything. Nothing is lost. It's all there in the hippocampus. It's all there in Pegasus in the heavens. It's like a recording device, and it's recording everything. And it, we call it memory. You know, we have this word membrane. Let me do this. Hold on. So we have this word membrane. It's, it's a memory, and it's a brain. When in your body, each cell has a membrane around it, and that membrane tells this it's encoded with information that tells the cell what other cells can attach to it what other elements or minerals or vitamins can attach to that cell and so it weeds out to prevent what we call cancer right when a when something attaches to the cell that it's not encoded to it distorts the signature and it mutates into what we call a cancer so the membrane is the memory. It has memory and a brain of its own. Your heart has a brain of its own. Your, your sexual organs, they have a brain and a mind of their own. They, uh, we don't, we don't decide who we love. You just don't. You, you, there is no decision about that. It just either is or is not. It has a mind of its own. You have a mind of your own. And these are all parts of the physical body. Uh, each chakra literally has a mind of its own. And they're all, they've been out of whack. We've been out of whack for so long that we wouldn't know truth or what real natural is if it hit, it hit us upside the head. We wouldn't know. But we're going to when, when this mortality puts on immortality. Now, that is one of the few questions I have left because I can see this in two ways because I've opened my third eye and I've had those out of body experiences to where I know I have a light body. So in my mind, in my experience, my flesh has already put on immortality. I already have my light body. I just got to shed this one, but I am, I'm, I still have to leave open the fact that it's very possible that um, something's going to happen to us physically when this frequency changes as we really move into Aquarius, that uh, indeed the body will become immortal. And that's its whole purpose. That's what it's been trying to do from the beginning. And in, before we're told we lived a thousand years, now we can't even get to a hundred without breaking down and falling all to pieces. Something happened that we started mutating the wrong way. So a transmutation cycle was put in to bring us back. Uh, nature kicked in its transmutation cycle. It started us at the bottom and now it's taking us back up to the third eye. Here, I want to do something real quick with the, the chakra thing. Let me see if I can get we're fixing to go through a major jump. One that, it's one of the biggest ones in uh, all of astrology. 
but it af so affects us physically. So down here you have Mars and on this side is Aries and on this side is Scorpio. Here we have Jupiter on this side is Pisces and on this side is Sagittarius. Now we're way down here. This is where we're at, way down here in Pisces. But we're moving up to Aquarius up here. Aquarius, Capricorn. We're not just moving from the lower chakras to the upper chakras. We're coming from the bottom all the way to the top. Down here, these two, this one, they make up, these two make up uh, part of this axis and then you have Mercury that is um, Virgo and uh, Gemini but we're in Pisces down here and we got to come all the way up here and but we've got this guy down here holding us back with this rod of iron and all this war I want to go back to Revelations now Okay, we're in Revelation chapter 20. I really want to do 21, but we need to look at 20 before we can look at 21. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, air sign, having the key of the bottomless pit. Bottomless pit, a lot of times this is translated as the abyss. It's the abyss, and it means water. I don't know why they call it a, a pit of hell fire when it's a pit of water. It's it, To me, it's like uh, the Pacific Ocean. And a, a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the old dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Water sign, dragon. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and put a seal on him that she, he should not deceive the nations no more till the thousand years be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a short season. So, you know that dragon has been in the pit. And he's been let out. We're, we are now, in, to me, we are in the time. Uh, let's just keep on. And I saw thrones, and they that sat on them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither received the mark upon their foreheads, nor in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. They lived and reigned with Chris a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again till the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. And shall go forth to deceive the nations, should be once more, once more, which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them to the battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Now, to me, this is where we're headed. You can't have the battle of Armageddon, Gog and Magog, before the thousand years. It's after. And I'm really tired of preachers and TV evangelists and internet self-appointed theologians trying to tell us that we're coming into the, we're going to have the battle of Armageddon and then a thousand years of peace. Where the hell are you getting that? From hell, I guess. I guess I said it. When the thousand years are expired. Then we go into the battle of Gog and Magog. Gog and Magog are the two pillars. The battle of fire and ice, like we always do this, over and over and over again. We're always doing this battle of fire and ice. The lunar pillar and the solar pillar. The ma masculine and the feminine. And we're, we just keep doing that. Well, they're all cast into the lake of fire with brimstone. Uh, lake... Mutable, fire, Sagittarius. Mutable, fire, mutable, fire. 
And I saw a great white throne in him that sat on it, whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was no place found for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. Uh, we're in the sea right now. And the in Pisces, and death and hell were delivered up, and the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. Well, what did you do with your time? Uh, I didn't do anything with it, but I was saved. I got baptized. I, I believed. Yeah, but what did you do? And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Sagittarius. That's when you'll be reincarnated. Let's go to the next one. I want to go to 21. Here we go. This is what we want. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. There's a new new heaven, Aquarius, and a new earth, Capricorn. For the first heaven, Gemini, and the first earth, Taurus, were passed away, and there was no more sea, Pisces. And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem. Oh, y'all are going to love this one. This this came to me the other day, I, uh, because S is a very unique letter. S it means secret. There there are certain letters. W means magic. But this S, we get this, the serpent on the pole. We get the dollar sign. It means secret. It means it's almost like a placeholder in a lot of instances. It's not an S in itself. It's substituting for something else. So I went through the gamut to see what it was substituting. And this is what I found. Let me uh, see if I can... Let's go here. Oh, can't go there without this. There we go. So, we have Jeru and Salim. And they tell us this means the city of peace. That Salim means of peace. This letter is hiding something. What's it hiding? Throw away the uh, vowels. You're going to love this one. What's the J hiding? It's Peruthalim. It's Peruthalim. It's not Jerusalem. The next city, the next Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem is Peru. It's Peruthalim. Thalem. The Lamb. That's where it is. It sits between uh, Lima and Cusco, Peru. It's part of Lima, Cusco, Machu Picchu. It's in that. It's right in the middle of that triangle of those three, and it, it will be called Peru Thalem, Peru Thalem, Peru Thalem, not Jerusalem. They are the serpent people. These people in Europe that claim they're the serpent race, they're not. The only serpent they have in them, they got from China. China, uh, South America is the feathered serpent, Quetzalcoatl. Well, his feathers got ripped off of him, and he was cast into China as the dragon. China has the fire-breathing dragon, but he has no feathers. He's, 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 his Belly is on the ground now. That dragon in China don't fly. It flops around the streets. And so you have this European group that have mixed with the yellow people. We call them Eurasians. Eurasians. And to have serpent people in you, you have to have either South American blood or the Chinese blood that mixed with the serpent people before their feathers were ripped off. 
So um, you have Eurasians, and then you have what they you call Caucasians. Uh, uh, Caucasians are Asians that crossed the Caucasus Mountains and bred with the white people. The word Arab, A-R-A-B, means mixed. We can use the word hybrid there. Uh, Anunnaki is Europeans. Get over it. Get over it. They're not from another world. The, on, the, the only other world they're from is another age. As we move through the ages, our DNA changes. There used to be giants here. Yep. Now we're little people. But it's all encapsulated here. There is no new thing under the sun. None. This has all happened before. It will all happen again. A universe is simply one turn around the wheel. That's it. Just one. Just one turn. It should say one turn, not one verse. It's one verse because it, when it spins around one time, the verse is complete. There are only 12 words in the verse. 12 constellations. They keep trying to take words out or change words or combine words, compound words, mix words. To understand alchemy, it was easy for me because I understand language. I get sentence structure. I get syntax. I get what they did. Each language dominated something. Like in the ancient Greek, uh, even today, Spanish, Portuguese, um, Latin, Esperanto, all these, um, what we would refer to as Latin American languages, they don't use pronouns. Uh, I mean, they don't, the masculine and feminine is built into the word. Uh, you don't say, um, it, male and female. We have two different words. Theirs is built into it. It's a baby boy, a bambino. A baby girl, a bambina. It's the A and the O. And they're flipped. The A should be masculine and the O is feminine. But they flipped them. Don't know why. Never got around to the why. But I know what they've done to the languages. And I know that alchemy is a set of symbols. It's a language of symbols. And these symbols are adjectives. They're descriptive words that mean something else. So we're going to Perutholum. It's like a kid that don't have any front teeth speaking. It's it's really, really weird how I figured all this out. And I don't think if I had not come from the South and learned language the way I did, uh, being brought up with a very draw, Southern drawl, a Southern drawl, we drawl out our words. I was born in Mississippi with mud between my toes. Every syllable, everything is accented. When uh, It's like the Hebrew language and their God, they call him Yod, right? Yod, that's a contraction. That's taking two words and contracting them into one. It's a contraction. That means there's something hidden there. What's hidden? You cannot. C-A-N-N-O-T. Two words. Now you can't. C-A-N apostrophe T. So what's the apostrophe doing? It's hiding the O. It hides the O. It replaces the O. So you don't see the O. What I don't understand is where do we get the word ain't from? How does am not, I am not, turn into I ain't, A-I-N-T? I haven't figured that one out. How did we get there from am not to ain't? But we did. And as a matter of fact, I did not know this. I always got in trouble for saying ain't. I was always told you're not allowed to use that. But, uh, and that it's a southern thing, but it's not. It's a freaking British thing. The British people have been using the word ain't far longer than us southerners, us dumbass southerners who don't have an education. But boy, can we speak. Because we draw those words out and we accent every syllable and every vowel. All of them. It's there. We don't, 
I was listening to something last night, and the person was talking so fast, all the words were slammed together. It just sounded like one big word. I couldn't even decipher it. I'm like, slow down. And uh, to me, that was my problem with Chinese. It all sounded like one big word. Uh, there was no break. There was no nothing between each syllable or between each word. It was just like one long string of consonants and vowels. And I'm like, I can't do this. I need to see it in each of its individual pieces. And then I can put the puzzle together. But m my brain works in a weird way. It don't, it, it don't seem to work like what I guess the system would call a normal person. Okay, I'm going to wrap this up, finishing, go ahead and go through Revelation chapter 21 uh, on what we can expect. Because if we're really entering Aquarius now, then the thousand years are finished. And there's not a thousand years left till Aquarius. Uh, if you do it by the names of the stars, there's about 700 years left. But we are told these days are shortened. We are told that it, it it's out of what I would call out of due time. Uh, this this time is shortened or no flesh would be saved. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Peru Thaline, come down out of from God out of heaven are from Gad, uh, out of Aquarius, out of uh, 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 God, Gad, uh, Aquarius, and Air, heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Um, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven is a zodiac. We're getting a new zodiac, a new wheel, a new verse. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is within men, not with them, within. And he will dwell within them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Pineal gland open. And God shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death. No more sorrow, no more crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. When I was drowning in the swimming pool, uh, I didn't need air to breathe underwater. I was so fascinated with my, my new body that I had, and that I didn't care about my other body drowning at the bottom of the pool. I didn't give a shit. I was watching it drown, struggle for its life. It was in complete terror complete terrified terror and i had zero empathy or sympathy for it i wasn't even interested in watching it die i was interested in hey uh i got hands and i can feel the density of the water but i can't feel it wet i can breathe underwater <sighs> wow this is cool i can breathe underwater i was so fascinated by that and and there was no more pain there was no more fear. There were no more tears. There was no more sorrow. There was no more anger. I was detached from everything lower chakra. I'm going to say that again. I was detached from everything lower chakra. The body is run by the lower chakras. The spirit is run by the upper chakras. And he said, and he that sat upon the throne, remember the throne is the spring equinox. And behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of water of life freely. The water bearer, that water he pours out in that pitcher in Aquarius, that's the water of life that cometh down out of heaven. Um, when you open your pineal gland, your whole body floods with this water of life. And he that overcometh, there's that word again, always, always, always associated with Saturn. Always. Saturn is the one that requires you to overcometh. Um, there's a big misinterpretation about the God of the Old Testament. And 
our God, our Father who art in heaven, air, air, not fire. Now, in that age, you did have Libra in heaven. That's our heart chakra, upper chakra. And now that, that, um, let's take a look at it. Because now when Peter dies upside down, somebody asked me about that. I'll take you there. Then it looks like this. And then you have Lucifer up here and Molech down here. Let me find uh, the other verse real quick for you. Uh, we know that in uh, the book of Peter, that Peter had desired, uh, he was not, Peter said he was not worthy to be crucified as Christ, to be crucified upside down. But the teaching itself coming from Origen in his commentary on Genesis and from uh, Eusebius of Caesarea in his Ecclesiastical History 3 said Peter was crucified at Rome, we know that, with his head downwards as he himself had desired to suffer. Let me get you another one. These are, this is a Nag Hammadi, the Acts of Peter, a apocryphal book. Let me do this. I don't think I'm right. All right. <clears throat> this is the apocryphal Acts of Peter out of the Nag Hammadi. We have one, two, three, five, uh, number 38. And having approached and standing by the cross, he began to say, let me make sure I'm not ahead of myself. Uh, name of the cross, thou hidden mystery, O grace ineffable, that is pronounced in the name of the cross, O nature of man that cannot be separated from God, O love, friendship unspeakable and inseparable that cannot be shown forth by unclean lips, I seize thee now, that I am at the end of my delivery hence, or of my coming hither. I will declare thee what thou art. I will not keep silence of the mystery of the cross which of old was shut and hidden from my soul let not the cross be unto you let not the cross be unto you which is hope in christ this which appeareth for it is another thing different from that which appeareth even this passion which is according to that of christ and now above all because that ye can hear, are able to hear it of me, that I am the last and final hour of my life. Hearken, separate your souls from everything that is of the senses, and from everything that appeareth, what you see, and does not exist in truth. Blind your eyes of yours, close your ears of yours, put away your doings that are seen, and ye shall perceive that which concerneth Christ." It's right meditation. You got to go into your closet. You got to be in the dark, in the quiet, in the silence, and the whole mystery of your salvation. And thus, and let thus much be said unto you that hear, as if it had not been spoken. And now it is time for thee, Peter, to deliver up thy body unto them that take it. Receive it then, ye unto whom it belongeth. I beseech you, the executioners, crucify me thus, with the head downward and not otherwise, and the reason wherefore I will tell unto them that hear. And when they had hanged him up after the manner he desired, he began again to say, now he's upside down, and they want to tell you that Peter's cross looks like this an upside down cross that is not peter's cross uh, that puts the sun at the top and aquarius at the bottom this is the cross for the age of babylon uh, this is the cross of nebuchadnezzar um, in the age of leo before the flood this is the cross before the flood uh, peter's cross is a Chris. And the funny thing about the Chris, when you turn it upside down, it looks the same. You can't tell the difference. Uh, symbols, 
Words and laws do not rule the world. Signs and symbols rule the world. Confucius. And when they had hanged him up after the manner he desired, he began again to say, Ye men unto whom it belongeth to hear, hearken to that which I shall declare unto you at this especial time as I hang here. Learn ye the mystery of all nature and the beginning of all things, what it was. For the first man whose race I bear in mine appearance or of the race of whom I bear the likeness fell or was born head downwards. We're born... Uh, we're born head first, upside down. Remember, we're born upside down. And showed forth manner of birth such as was not hitherfore to, for it was dead, having no motion. He then, being pulled down, who also cast his first date down into the earth, established this whole disposition of all things, being hanged up an image of the creation wherein he made the things of the right hand into the left hand, and the left hand into the right hand, and changed about all the marks of their nature, so that he thought those things that were not fair to be fair, and those that were in truth evil to be good. This is how we know that Peter is in the process of being crucified upside down. Peter is the age of Pisces, and all of us, everybody that what we call um, not falling, not following the television. Uh, they see that uh, what they call good is evil, and what is evil is good. Concerning which the Lord saith in a mystery, unless ye make the things of the right hand as those of the left, and those of the left as of the right, and those that are above as below, and those that are behind are which are before, then ye shall not have knowledge of the kingdom. Because they've got it all upside down. They bibble-babbled everything in the scriptures. This thought, therefore, have I declared unto you, and the figure wherein ye now see me hanging is the representation of that man that first came unto birth. Remember I told you... Uh, we have all, we are all born, we've all been crucified upon one of these crosses. Your crucifixion is your birth, not your death. Your crucifixion is your birth. When you come into this world, it's your natal chart. That's your cross. It's your burden to bear during your lifetime, not at your death. I hope that cleared that up. All right, back to Revelations. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful, lower chakra, unbelieving, lower chakra, the abominable, lower chakra, murderers, lower chakra, whoremongers, lower chakra, sorcerers, lower chakras, idolaters, lower chakras, liars, they shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. Now, all of these, uh, we're in the age of Jupiter, right? And we're going to enter two ages of Saturn and then back to another age of Jupiter, that lake of fire. Um, the lake of fire is, it's about ideology and philosophy. It's in the mind. It's in, it's in the mind. It's, it's that part of the, brain, uh, that part of our personality that doubts. Uh, gotta see it to believe it kind of thing. And there came unto one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, and I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife, Thalem, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven. Uh, the current Jerusalem is on a, is called on Mount Moriah. Comes from the word Mary. Comes from the word water. This is coming out of air. 
and it's a high mountain. Mount Moriah is nothing more than a hill, really. I don't know why they call it a mountain. It's a hill. But Machu Picchu is called the city in the clouds. That's a great hill. And he carried me away into a spirit to a great and high mountain. The Andes are, are awesome. And he showed me the great city, the holy Peru Thalem, descending out of air, heaven, from God, Aquarius. And having the glory of God, and her light was likened to a stone, her, a most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a great a wall, great and high, and twelve gates, and the twelve gates, twelve angels, and the names thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. And you got uh, three gates on four sides, right? Just like a zodiac put into a square. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the name of the twelve apostles of Thalem, the twelve houses of the zodiac of Thalem. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof. And it gives us the dimensions, the pearls, uh, the stones that go with each. <clears throat> and I saw no temple therein. There's no temple. Why? Your left eye has a temple on the side of your head and the right eye has a temple on the side of your head. But you'd have to drill a hole in your head for your third eye to have a temple. Right in the middle. You'd have to drill a hole in your head. Because there's no temple. And the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. We already know. The Lamb is Fomahalt. Fomahalt. And the city hath no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. Uh, Aquarius and Capricorn are one. They're both ruled by Saturn, and they're opposite Leo and Cancer, the sun and the moon. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Thalem, Falmahalt, is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor to it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, and whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie. But they which are written in Thalem's book of life. We're going to South America. That's the next stage. That's where it began, and that's where it ends. The Alpha and the Omega, the Feathered Serpent, the Air Sign. Libra is the Most High of Heaven. That's the Father. It's masculine. Aquarius is the Son, the King. Gemini is the Prince, or the Holy Spirit. And they all change places. When this age flips upside down, the Holy Spirit becomes what? The opposite of that. The unclean spirit. You're supposed to try the spirits. It says try the spirits to see if they be of God. No, it's try the spirits to see which God they be of. You got to know. Lower chakra, upper chakra. All right. All right. We're an hour and a half into this 15-minute video, so I'm going to shut it down. Let me pull us back to now. I'm really loving this Mercury, Venus, and Taurus. It's on the fixed cross, so it's stable. Venus is house of the heart on Earth. It's very feminine, and um, Mercury is your speech, and Venus is your heart. And I really have been speaking to you from my heart today. I feel like the Zodiac's been speaking to you today, actually. Uh, my video was only 15 minutes long. The rest of this, I take no credit for. <clears throat> but I hope that's answered y'all's questions. I'll always warn you if there's an auspicious time. Uh, 
that need are, are something you need to look out for or be careful on. I've already told you these these people that are doing this. We're watching the solar pillar and the lunar pillar at war. That's what's going on. There's fighting amongst themselves for power, especially. <clears throat> I do believe that the the monkey wrench in their works uh, was uh, the Grand Master dying, uh, Prince Philip, whatever he calls himself, uh, Battenberg. He was uh, the Grand Master of the Lodge of England, and he's gone. So you have the Scottish Rite fighting the York Rite, right? The Scottish Rite and the York Rite actually came together um, with Princess Diana. And so the two boys, they represent uh, a mixture of the two pillars. They're hybrid. They're the two. They're, they're Arab. They're mixed. And uh, they have Scottish Rite and York Rite. So you're watching this battle go down right now. And it's upside down. It's everything is upside down. But uh you have the solar pillar at war with the lunar pillar. And it plays out in the heavens. I don't know where they thought they could actually get away with making that permanent. Or if they assumed that it would be. That's kind of ridiculous. But to me when the Templars came back from the Middle East, and the they were French Templars at that, and they came back from the Middle East, and they started setting up kingdoms, and the Pope, um, since Charlemagne, started crowning kings in the name of Christ. That's your thousand years. We've done it. We've done it. Uh, now, uh, and at that point, Satan was locked down. Now he's been loosed, and um, we get to um, go for the Battle of Gog and Magog, right? That's Everybody's telling us we're at the apocalypse, Gog and Magog. Uh, you can't have both. Uh, the thousand years comes before Gog and Magog. You can't have it both ways. And you got to decide which timeline you're going to be in. I'm just sitting watching the show. I'm watching what they're doing. I don't watch TV at all. Really, at all. Uh, I can't remember the last time I saw the news. But people are constantly sending me, watch this, watch that. Um, I get the little pop-ups and recommendations on the side. So I see some of the headlines and I see what's going on. And if it is something to do with what's going on right now, I, I'll watch it. But I don't watch it in fear. I watch it to decode it. What are you really saying? I know you're not talking to us. I know you're talking to each other. But what are you saying? And it helps you see what their plans are. But I know how they operate. That's the first thing I did was I started looking at all of the rituals that had been done during my lifetime anyway in the heavens. And and what was the pattern? And most of all, what's the common denominator? What do all of these events have in common? And they had the moon in common, they had Taurus in common, and they had Scorpio in common. And then they had the fixed cross, the changing of the ages, 311 and 911, 611 and 1211, uh, these dates um, that they're marking, they're marking the cross. And when they show you Peter's cross upside down, as, as that fixed cross upside down, it's not Peter's cross. Again, that, that's a cross for the age of Leo. And it's what we would call the Babylonian cross. Um, there's another name for it. Uh, oh, Yaldabaoth. Yaldabaoth's cross. You see uh, in Nostradamus, the lost book of Nostradamus with all those images in it that are basically a tarot deck. And he has these images of a lion serpent 
with the fire under him. Uh, that's that's Peter's what they're calling Peter's cross upside down. Um, that's the animalistic, elemental nature of it. Now, Aquarius, when the sun is in Aquarius is in the throne of the spring equinox, then um, the lion is on the bottom. You have a man with a his foot on a lion's head. Uh, Thalem has his foot on the sun. Regulus is the nail in the feet of the Messiah. Aldebaran is the nail in his right hand. Antares is the nail in his left hand. And Fomahalt is the crown. Thalem means master, teacher, rabbi, instructor, educator. Isn't that what Christ called the Holy Spirit? That he will come and he will teach you and guide you in all things. Fomahalt's called the guiding light. These are the four fixed stars of the heavens. No matter If you know where these four stars are, you can navigate through anything. Anything. But right now, we're under a Chris, not a cross. And it's an upside down Chris with a rod of iron. But that's all going to be broken. By what? This star right here. Because it represents the third eye. And when you open your third eye, then the white horse, the rider on the white horse appears. And that's your memories. And rem we remember all of this. All of it. All of creation. We get to remember and know everything. But first has to come destruction. We have to get rid of the first heaven and the first earth, Gemini and Taurus. They're going to pass away. We won't remember them anymore when we get our new zodiac, our new uh, city of Peru, Thalem. Jeru is, uh, Yah, it's Jerusalem. It's Yah, it's Jupiter. Jupiter. In, it's like in Egypt, they tell us the, the, the city there is Cairo. Uh, actually, it's Babylon. It's not Cairo. I've done that. Chi they put the Cairo there because this is a Cairo. It's called a Cairo. They superimposed this whole age of Taurus over the age of Babylon. We know this. Even Peter speaks of this. Watch. Uh, we're back to 1 Peter 5, where we kind of started all of this. Oops. Let's go down where are we at. It's to the end. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. By Silvanius, a faithful brother unto you, as I suppose I have written briefly, exhorting and testifying, this, that this is the true grace of God wherein ye stand, the church that is at Babylon, elected together with you, salute you, and so doth Marcus, my brother. So it's the church at Babylon. That's who he's writing to. That's who he's talking to. Uh, all things in order. It's a puzzle. You got to take the pieces and put them together. The fortress of Babylon is in downtown Cairo. Uh, the lion represents Babylon. The sphinx is a lion man. It represents Aquarius and Leo. Babylon is Leo. But Peter's cross is not an upside-down cross. It's an upside-down Chris. And that makes Jesus baby Mercury. But in the next age, the next two ages, Mercury and Jupiter don't have any part in it. None. Zero. And I'll leave that at that. Y'all know what to do. You know what? <clears throat> have you been doing the get up every day and be grateful 
get obviously you're not off the fear porn i've gotten hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of oh my god it's may 26th and the world's coming to an end you should know better by now than to fall for that crap you you should be able to look at the stars yourself and know you can look at them in solar astrology lunar astrology or alchemical astrology Today looks like a great day. Love the Venus-Mercury conjunction. Love the moon right in the face of the Sagittarian. But I guess if we had, if I had to tell you to watch it, what we're watching right now is Mars because of what all's going on. You, th these are the actions, your emotions and your actions. Not just for you, but everybody, the whole world, the whole age. And when it enters into here, oh my, my. If a war starts here, it's going to be started in the air, mutable air. Let's see how long he's going to be there. Until the 8th. So we got, what, 10 days, 11 days? before he enters cancer and then everything should be good no war no war here whoever starts a war here loses really fast throw no stones never throw a stone at anyone or anybody when Mars is in cancer let there be peace on earth because if you do it's a bad day because Mars is debilitated here so, and if they're that stupid or that smart, uh, they could drag us into a war and have America throw a stone here so that we do lose, that it was done that way on purpose. That's the only thing that I would watch for. And if you know that anybody throws a stone during this time, whatever country does it, duh, take cover. You got to know what else to tell you. Get your ducks in order. Because it will be bad. It'll be quick. It'll be swift. And it'll be bad. And right now, especially in the Middle East, they're pot prodding. They're poking and prodding that serpent. They're, they're doing everything they can to get something started. Uh, these two pillars are at war. Don't get caught up in the middle of it. It's not your war. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Stay out of it. It's not your fight. There's nothing you can do. You can't change the world. You can't stop this. It's written in the stars. Nothing can stop what is coming. And I know you've heard that from both sides. But I'm telling you from the middle path. What's coming. What time it is. Where we're going. What we need to be doing. And the only alarm I've got to ring is I'm waiting on Mars to get over here because it's going to be a peaceful time. But with what all's going on, I don't doubt it for a second that they would love to provoke a country that they hate to start a war here, to even throw a stone. So, and, and this can be civil war as well within our own country, throwing stones at each other. A war within your family, don't start one. Don't start wars at your work. Don't start wars in your relationships. Don't start wars in your family. Let peace have a breather. And it will last until... Uh, 7-10. 7-9 is the last day. From 6-8 to 7-9. We get literally a whole month of a breather. And the 4th of July will fall in that. The summer solstice will fall in that. In that alignment. All right. I think I'm done now. You know, you know what to do. Go bank your good karma. Be grateful for the little things in life. For the air you breathe. Even be thankful if you don't feel good. Uh, and be thankful for your recovery before it happens. Uh, 
but most of all, I usually tell you to go out and commit a random, random act of kindness. Today, I'm going to tell you to be kind to yourself instead of others. Today, do something for you. Be kind to you. Uh, a lot of us, we put ourselves off. Uh, I'm, I'm the world's worst about that. I'll always put everything and every what all else needs to be done over what I need to be done. And it took me a long time to learn to, I need to at least every once in a while do something for myself. And today I'm going to advise you to do that for you. Instead of committing a random act of kindness to a neighbor or a stranger, uh, commit a random act of kindness to yourself. Surprise yourself. Do something good for you. Something you want, something you like, or something you need. Uh, but just be kind to yourself today. And let the world worry for itself. If something scary's coming, I'll try to warn you, but not scare you about it. I love you all. Love each other. And love yourself. If you can't love yourself, how can you possibly love somebody else?